is analog input with digital alarming on the NIUSB 6211. We'll get into programming this with LabVIEW in just a moment, but first I would like to show you our hardware setup. This is the USB 6211. We have a microphone that we're going to receive a signal from. It's going to come into our analog input channel zero. We'll set this up in differential ended mode and since this device doesn't have a ground source, we'll provide a path to ground through this resistor right here. On our digital output side, we'll take an LED, we'll drive it from our digital output line through the LED, which has a current limiting resistor in it, straight back to ground. So that's our hardware setup. Let's get into LabVIEW and program our application. We'll go to a front panel, we'll click right, and we'll put a graph down as our first thing. And our graph, what we're going to do is stretch this out. And then we're going to set the range on this to be plus and minus one millivolt. We'll also tell this not to auto scale because we don't want it to change while we're running. We'll also tell it a loose fit, which means our data will span all the way from the left to the right. So that's our graph, and now we'll go and we'll add something else. We'll add a strip chart here, or a waveform chart. So we'll put this down, and this is going to allow us to see the frequencies that are coming out of our microphone. So we'll be doing some analysis, and this will allow us to see those frequencies. So what we're going to do is set our range from zero up to two kilohertz, because that's the top frequency that we'll be detecting. We'll tell it not to auto scale, and we're pretty set there, except that we would like to add another plot to this. We're going to see two waveform plots, and we'll have a white one, we'll have a red one, We'll change the thickness, though, so that you can see it better when they're plotting. The last thing that we'll do on our front panel is put an LED. So we'll click right, and this is going to be a virtual LED that will just mimic exactly what's happening on our real-world LED. And again, our real-world LED is right here coming into the 6211. So that's our front panel. Let's go back to our diagram and program our application. First thing that we'll do is click the right mouse button and we'll get a DAC assistant. And we're going to set up our data acquisition. Now we're acquiring a dynamic signal, so we'll have analog input, voltage, we'll choose it on our channel AI0, and we're going to acquire it at a bit higher rate, so we'll set that in just a moment. First thing that we would like to do is set the range. So we know that our microphone is not powered, so we're going to need to amplify that. So we'll set it for plus and minus 100 millivolts, and that will engage the onboard amplifier. It's already set up for differential ended mode, so that's fine. What we'd like to do to, is to tell it to acquire continuous samples. We would like to set up our acquisition number of acquisition samples to be 4096. We'll be doing some spectral analysis, so that's a good binary number to choose. And then we'll set our acquisition rate to be 20,000 samples per second. That's our configuration for the analog input, so let's go ahead and say OK to that and continue on. It's going to ask if we want to put this inside a loop, and we do because we want it to do it over and over again. So we'll say yes to that. OK, so the next thing that we want to do is apply a filter because we know we're probably going to get some high frequency input here that we don't want to have happen unless we intend it to come through. So we'll apply a filter to our data that's coming out of our analog input task. So we'll go into our express functions, we'll get our filter function, and we'll put it down, and then we'll set up our filter. So inside of our filter task, we want a low pass option. We want to filter everything that's from 2000 hertz and up. We want to filter that out, so this will be low pass, and we'll say OK to that. Next, we can take our data that's being acquired and we can run it into our filter function and that will only allow 2000 Hertz and below to pass through. Next we want to go and wire that filtered signal up to our waveform graph so we'll connect that up there. Okay, what we would like to do next is go and find out what the predominant frequency is coming through the microphone. And the way we're going to do this is with another express function called a tone extraction function. So we'll go get that function, we'll put it in, and we'll answer a few questions about that. Basically, we don't want to read amplitude out of this, we would instead just want the frequency. So we'll say OK to that. And that's going to go and pull out the primary tone. Now we want to wire over our data that we've filtered 
into our tone extraction, and this is going to come out with that actual tone value. The next thing we need to do to alarm off of this is to be able to compare it to a value. So we're going to go get a compare function, and in our compare palette we have greater than, less than, equal to. We'll choose the greater than function, and we're going to take that frequency that's coming out of our tone measurement function, and we're going to compare it to a constant. So we'll run up to the top side of our greater than, and we'll compare it to a constant. Now I know I can whistle in the 1500 hertz range, so we're going to compare it to that value of 1500 hertz. What we would like to do next now is show this on our waveform chart. We're going to show what is the predominant frequency coming out of our microphone, and we're going to compare that to 1500. So I'd like to show both of those on the chart. So we're going to take those values and we're going to wire them up to the waveform chart. And there's our constant being wired in, and now we'll wire in the actual frequency itself. And you'll see LabVIEW goes ahead and merges these signals, and now we can see that. The last thing that we need to do here is output the alarm. So when we get a true state that we're above 1500 hertz, we want to issue a digital alarm. So we'll take another DAC assistant, we'll put it in here, and we're going to tell it to generate signals, digital output, line out, and then we're going to choose line zero. And remember in our hardware setup, this is digital output line zero right here. Okay, so we're set and ready to go there. And now we need to wire the output of our compare into our digital output line. So we'll wire that over right there. And as a final touch, we'll take our Boolean now, and we'll also wire that result to our Boolean so that our Boolean that's on the front panel will match what's happening in our real-world LED. So we'll just go ahead and wire that in. All right, so that's our program. We've got our diagram all set up. Now we're ready to run this and we'll hit the run button. And so we see our waveform coming in. We see some lower frequencies that are included in my voice. And what I'm going to do is whistle and if I'm above 1500 hertz, the LED should come on, both the virtual one and the one in the real world. So you can see I was just above 1500 hertz there. I'll whistle a little bit lower now and it should not trigger it. So if I go above and below now, you should see it go on and off as the frequencies go above and below. So you can see indeed it does trigger, and it's triggering based on our frequency. That frequency is being acquired at higher acquisition rates that are made possible by the 60 to 11's acquisition frequency capability. So this is an application that shows how to do analog input with digital triggering on the NI-6211.